Now our application is nearly completed here. There's just a few small things that I want to go ahead and improve and fix for the user experience. So as you can see here right now, we have no cities in our application. One thing I do want to address with that is if we have no cities, I want to display a message that says in the middle here, um, it'll look like this. It's going to say no cities, add it, add a new one. And then you can click the add city button here and then you're allowed to add a new city. That'll just go ahead and improve the user experience because right now this looks very plain and we want to inform the users um, that we can add an application here. Now the other thing is if we click on this plus icon to add a new city and let's just add the city of Warren. You can see that adds without a problem, but there is no validation if the city already exists. So if we want to go ahead and add Warren again, we can actually do that and it will go ahead and add it twice. So we want to remove the ability to add the same city twice. It just makes for a bad user experience. Now, the other issue is if we enter a city that doesn't exist, you can see that if I enter some random characters here and hit add, we get a 404 error over here saying that the city can't be found when it makes the API call, but we never alert the user that the city doesn't exist. So they're going to wonder like what's going on here if they're actually trying to enter an actual city. So we want to go ahead and fix that as well. All right, so let's head over to our view project and begin to implement this. Let's begin with validating our modal, which we go ahead and enter the city into. So the first thing that we're going to fix is if a user enters a city that doesn't exist, we want to alert them a message. So how we're going to do this is inside of our add city function here, we're going to come inside of this else clause here and we're going to run a try and then a catch block. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to first say, hey, try this API call. And if you get an error, then we'll catch it and then we'll let the user know. So we're going to remove all this uh, right here and we're going to paste it inside of the try block. And then we're going to save that. And then what we want to do in here is we want to alert them a message. Now, what this is going to be is if it gets an error, it's going to be inside of this uh, API call. And what we want to do is we want to alert them saying, hey, that city you entered does not exist please try again. So what we're going to do is we can actually do some interpolation here and we can show them the city name that they went ahead and add it or they tried adding by saying this dot city and then we want to uh, create our custom message here. We're going to say does not exist. Please try again. All right. So now if we head over to our application and if we try to add a new one here and we just say some random string here and we say add, you can see that it's going to take the value we entered and it's going to display it here in the alert message. And it's going to say it does not exist. Please try again. So now we have a way to inform the user that the value they entered does not exist. Now, what we want to do next is if we add a city, like say, for example, warn here, and then we add it again. We want to remove the ability for that to happen. So we need to go ahead and look if the value already exists in our application. And if it does, then we want to alert the message chain, hey, this value already exists. So to implement this, what we need to do is actually get a reference to our cities array that's going to be located in our app.view and have access to that here in this modal. So what we actually need to do is head over to our app.view and we need to do a vbind of our cities array here on our modal. So I have that copied. So I'm going to say colon cities equals cities. So that way we can access this as a prop inside of our modal component. So we'll say cities and I forgot the quotes. Okay. So now that we have access to this, what we want to do is we're going to create another condition here before this else clause right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say else if, and then let's open up this block. And then what we want to say in here is we're going to run a condition and that condition is going to be this dot cities. And we're going to use the sum method here. Now the sum method returns a callback. So we want to pass it a parameter. And in this case, we're just going to call it res for result. And then we can run the callback here and we want to say res dot city because if you recall on this cities array it has a value or a field of city now what we want to do is we want to say if this city exists 
So if this returns true, then we want to alert a message to the user saying, hey, this city already exists inside of the application. So we're gonna say equals here, and we wanna say this dot city, and we're gonna be using the two lowercase here because and we also wanna add it here because in case the user decides to um, hypothetically camel case some type of um, you know result or do something like that, it's going to be all lowercase no matter what and we're not depending on the user to enter it correctly. Okay, and then I believe we're missing a, uh, what's going on here? Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We need to actually wrap this inside of there and then what we want to do is we're going to space this out and I think something's still wrong I think we're missing one more uh, parenthesis there there we go somehow messed it up along the way so if this returns true then we want to say hey this city already exists in the application so we can do another custom alert message here and we're gonna use our interpolation so we're going to use back ticks and we then once again want to say this dot city and we're going to say already exist and now if we head over to our application here and we refresh it so now if I add a city by the name of Warren we add that everything still works properly but now if we add a city and we camel case say like we put some uh, capital letters in here and say Warren and hit add you're gonna see that it's going to say it already exists. And the reason why this is working properly, like this, even though we camel cased it, is because the value that the user's typing in is being converted to lowercase lettering in both instances, especially when it's being sent over to our fire uh, store collection. All right, so there we go. We have now implemented our simple validation to heavily improve our application here. Okay, so lastly, we want to implement the feature where if we have no cities added, we have this custom message right here and this button. So let's head over to our application here. And inside of add city, what we actually want to do is we actually want to create an empty div here. And we're going to throw our div of grid inside of this new div because we can only have one main div here or one parent div. Now what we want to do is we're going to create another div here with a class of no cities. And then inside of here, we're going to create a paragraph tag and we're going to have this say no cities, add it, add a new one. Okay. And then what we want to do is we're going to create a button here and this button is going to simply say add city. So, what we want to do is since we don't want this div of no cities to display when we have cities actually um, in our application, we can run a v if on here. And what we want to say is if cities, because you can remember that we have the access to cities in this component, we can say cities and we can get the length. And if the length is equal to zero, which means there is no cities in our array, then we want to display this, all right? Now we have to add some styling here, and for that I'm actually going to copy this in. And we're going to put that right above here. So what we're saying here is we want to position this absolute, give it a min height of 100 VH, a max width of 1024 pixels, otherwise be 100% of the uh, available space. We want to display this as flex so we can center it in the page and we want to give it a color of white. So right now if we come over here you can see that it's not going to show because we have a city currently in our application but if we delete this now you can see we now are presented with this text. So there is still one little bit of styling we need to do, which is going to be on our button. Now for that, I'm going to copy in the styling as well because it's just some simple markup. And where is it? Here we go. So what we want to simply say here for this button is I'm going to just paste right below the cities array here is we're given a margin top of 16, a padding of 8 on the top and bottom and 24 on the left and right. We are rounding the corners of the border radius, uh, no border, cursor pointer. And then we added a little bit of a, a hover effect here, which you're not going to see on mobile. So if I actually um, decrease that, you can see that when you hover over it, it kind of looks like it's getting inset. Okay, but we still have one issue. If we click on the button, nothing happens. So 
what we want to do is on this button we want to run a click method or a click um, so when we run when we click on the button we want to go ahead and run a function so we're going to do that by saying at click and the function we want to run here is going to be called add city all right so this function is actually the same exact thing we use in our navigation so what I'm going to do is we're going to come over here to this and we're going to copy this and inside of our modal we're going to say uh, let's see here right below the add city we'll add this so what we want to do is we're going to run this function and it's going to emit the uh, custom event of add city so if we come over to our app and we look for that I believe it is already on the uh, let's see here the navigation so we can copy this V on handler right here and put it on our router view so now if we click this button uh, add city what did we do wrong here on the modal ah we can't actually do that um, I put it on the wrong one what am I what am I doing here all right that was the wrong spot to add that actually I'm sorry I was wondering why I was giving us that error so we actually want to do this on the add city here okay so what we're gonna do is we haven't created our methods on here I was wondering why that went easier it's because I did that wrong and what we're gonna do is put a comma there to remove that and then we can add it here and now we should get rid of that error so if I refresh it here and let's just put this back into mobile view now if I click on this button you should see we have the ability to open up our modal and add a new city so if I say for example add the city of Warren that all works great but there's still one issue that we need to go ahead and address and that's if we refresh it here you can see even though we have the city at it this text gets displayed for a split second and once again that's just something we don't want to um, encounter it makes for a bad user experience so let's go ahead and fix that the main reason why we're seeing this appear when we actually refresh our application is because if we head over to our application here or our project I should say if we come over to the data when the project is first rendered in the city's array is empty it has a length of zero and if you recall in our add city component here we're looking to see if this is equal to zero which for a short time when the application is first loaded in it is equal to zero so what we need to implement is a sort of loading mechanism that says hey don't show the application until we have some data populated in our cities array so we've already done something similar in our weather view we're going to be pretty much doing the same exact thing here in our app dot view now the first thing I want to do is we're going to create a is loading variable or I should say data whatever you want to call it and we're gonna set this equal to true upon the initial render next up what I want to do is inside of our markup here we need to create some new divs here and the first one I'm gonna give it a class of app now this is where we're going to store all of our uh, components and a router view so I'm going to move these in here by copying them and then we're going to paste them inside of here okay now the next thing we want to do is create the markup for our loading icons so we're going to create a class or a div with a class of loading and inside of here we're going to give it a span which we don't have to put anything in it and what we want to do here is we want to say only show this if is loading is true otherwise we'll show this all right so we already actually created all the styling for our loading uh, icon in our weather component so what we can actually do here is instead of duplicating the CSS because it's you know always a good thing not to repeat yourself we can just copy this styling here we can come over to our app dot view and since this is a global styling we can actually just paste it in here and our weather component will be able to access this and we can also use it inside of our um, app dot view here so if we head over to our application here you can see that currently our application is in, in an infinite loop because we don't have anything set to uh, change the value of is loading to false so let's go ahead and work on that now what we want to do is there's going to be two spots we need to address here so currently we are running this function get city weather which is going to populate our cities array so what we want to do is once we get through one of these we can say this dot is loading and we want to set this to false 
inside of our then method inside of this for each loop. Now, even though there may be multiple documents, it's only going to get set to false once. It's not going to get set back and forth to true and false. So even though this will technically get ran a few times, it's not going to affect the um, performance or appearance of anything you'll see on our application. Okay, so if we save this and we head over to our application, you can see when we refresh it, we no longer will see um, that icon. We'll briefly see for a moment that spinning um, icon in the background. Okay, now if we go ahead and delete this, if we say delete, you can see we now get um, this no cities added, add a new one, and then we can go ahead and add it and our mode will pop up. Now there's still one small issue here. If I refresh this, our application is going to be stuck in another infinite loop. And you may be wondering why. Okay, now the reason this is happening is because if there is no documents in our Firestore collection, this right here of doc changes will never run, therefore it'll never get set to false. So what we need to do is this snap uh, parameter here. If I console, let's see, console.log, and we'll say snap. If we go over to our web browser here, you can see that if I open this up, we, can, we have this docs, and it's an array. Currently, it has a length of zero. So what we want to do is if this value of snap.docs.length equals zero, we then want to change our is loading uh, value here to false because it's never going to run inside of here. So what we can do is we're going to say if snap.docs.length is equal to zero, then we want to say this dot is loading is equal to false. All right. So if we head over to our application now, you can see even though we have no documents, we're still going to have this screen appear and we'll be no longer stuck in an infinite loop. So now if I go to add a new city here, we select warn, it adds it, that message disappears. And then if I delete this city, the message reappears. And if I refresh the application, everything still works perfectly. All right, then, so that's going to wrap up our project here with Vue.js and Firebase. If you guys did enjoy, I would appreciate you guys leaving a like down below for this series and also subscribing if you're new for more projects like this. And I would love to see what you guys came up with. If you guys just followed along or if you guys changed something, just go ahead and tweet those projects at me on my Twitter. You can find the link down below, or you can simply go ahead and follow me and then message me that way too. Anyways, that's going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy once again, and I will see you guys for the next project.